All right, we've been talking quite a bit about the Biot-Savar law, and in this example, we're going to apply the Biot-Savar law to find the um, magnetic field intensity due to a triangular loop at a certain point. So here's my uh, figure, and it's got this triangular loop, and that triangular loop is lying in the xy plane. And uh, this is going to be a three-dimensional idea, just like almost all electromagnetics. I, um, f problems and so you can imagine the z-axis um, by pointing out your fingers of your right hand to the x-axis curling towards the y-axis and then your thumb points towards you if you did that correctly and that's the z-axis so the positive z-axis is coming out at us so we're going to find the magnetic field at 0, 0, 005 so that's at the origin in this figure and then five units coming out towards you that's what we're talking about here okay and so our triangular loop rests in this xy plane all right and I, in the figure i've already labeled segments one two and three so if you had a figure like this and they were not labeled one two and three you have to know it's expected that you know that you have to segment this thing up into the three different segments and why do we want to do that well the total magnetic field intensity h is the sum of the contributions from each segment. All right, so we need to find the contributions from each segment and then add them all up, right? And we know how to do, we know how to get the total magnet or the magnetic field from a straight wire. We did this in a previous um, video, a previous lecture. We found that um, when the wire rests on the z axis, and when it starts at A and ends at B, we found that the magnetic field intensity at some point whose perpendicular distance is rho away is I, the current, divided by 4 pi rho times B over rho squared plus B squared minus A over the square root of rho squared plus A squared. And then in the a phi, in, in the phi direction. So the phi direction in this little figure that I've drawn is circling around the wire. So if you you can use the right hand rule again, and you point your thumb uh, in the direction of current, which current is going up in this direction in this figure, and then your fingers uh, swirl in the direction of a phi. Okay. So at this point here in this plane. The, your, your fingers would be swirling into the page. All right, so now let us find the magnetic field intensity due to segment one. Well, segment one it, it lies on the x-axis. So it, that's not the z-axis, of course, but uh, it's good that it lies on axis. And so we can apply, actually, um, what we've done here just making a few changes, or one change actually. So um, we can say that H1, the magnetic field intensity due to segment 1, is simply 10, which is uh, 10 amps, the current, divided by 4 pi times rho. So how far away is the field point perpendicularly from this segment? Well, uh, remember, z-axis is coming out towards us, so our field point is at the origin and then five units out towards us. That's still perpendicular. That's perpendicular to segment one, so that is just five units away. That's nice. Five units away like that. Okay, and then times, okay, b, so b is uh, two here, right? And over the square root of 25, which is you know, five squared, plus 2 squared. And then a here is 0 times a phi like this. Now we have to interpret phi a little bit differently. Remember phi is the direction that's swirling so it's not the normal cylindrical coordinate phi. It's swirling around this way because our axis is not normally, you know, it's, it's, not, it's the x-axis, it's not normally the z-axis. Okay, so it's swirling this way and uh, if you, if you point your thumb of your right hand in the direction of x and you curl your fingers, okay, when you get to the field point, you should notice then that the 
magnetic field or your, your fingers are pointing down actually right so so again imagine remember the field point is five units away or five minutes out towards you five units out towards you so you point your thumb along the x-axis curl your fingers towards you right and then when you get to that field point your fingers are actually pointing down so this is uh, a that it's all to say that a phi is actually negative a y down right negative a y so if we compute this then uh, what we get is just negative 1 over pi times the square root of 29 a y it looks like so that again the negative sign comes from the, the direction right and a y is, is this a phi once we once we transpose it to our coordinate system and then uh, we do some cancellation and we get this so we're, we'll come back to this okay that's but that's our first part of our answer if you like now when we move to segment two we have to take a different perspective here um, because segment two does not lie on axis okay but what we can do is call this axis maybe x prime or something okay now keep in mind though because x prime is still in the yz or the yx plane then x prime is still perpendicular to z so now imagine uh, just looking at a picture of z so we're going to change our perspective a little bit and here's x prime okay still perpendicular z and x prime and so the wire segment is like this segment two now we're talking about segment two and then it goes towards the origin like this and uh, we've got this point here and we've got this point here and our field point is at five so they're still perpendicular so our row here is still going to be five and this is the direction of rho, right? And um, what is this coordinate here along x prime? Well, how far up the x prime axis do we go? Well, we go one over x in the x direction and one over in the y direction. And so this length is the square root of two. So we go the square root of two there. All right, and we'll call this a l, script l. And that is a vector in the a unit vector along the direction of segment two. Okay, so now let's kind of let's find these unit vectors. So let's find a l. Okay, again that's that's a unit vector along this x prime axis. That's this way, right in the original figure. Okay, well you can see that we go we go down one unit and we go left one unit and so uh, that's negative uh, a x minus a y and then over root two because you know we've got we've got one in the x direction one in the y direction and so we, we've got this as our unit vector okay that should be straightforward by this point all right, now we talked about how rho is still equal to 5 because that's the perpendicular distance, right? And uh, on our, on our um, axis here, our x prime axis, a is 0 and b is root 2, right? And so, uh, right, we've got we're going from 0 to root 2 from 0 to root 2 and the direction though is taken care of by this guy here. Alright so now we just kinda plug in our formula and we see that H2 is equal to again 10 amps divided by 4 pi times 5 times square root of 2 over it looks like the square root of 27 which would be uh, rho squared, which is 5 squared, plus square root of 2 squared. So we've got 27 there. Okay, again, a phi. So we have to figure out what that a phi is, um, because in the, in the, this is relative to the x prime axis, so that's swirling around the x prime axis. So the way we can get that is simply by doing a cross product. Okay, we can take a L 
cross that with a row, and that is sure to give us a vector that's perpendicular to both a l and a row, i.e. a phi. Think about cylindrical coordinates where a l is the z axis, where it's aligned along the z axis. You take z and you cross it with uh, a, a unit vector in a row. In the row direction, you get your a phi because those those are basis vectors and they are all orthogonal to one another. Okay, so let's do it. Let's find that a phi is equal to the determinant. I'll put ax here, right? ay here, az here, and negative 1 over root 2. Negative 1 over root 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this 0, 0, 1, this is a unit vector along the phi direction, so that's along the z direction, so a unit vector is 0, 0, 1. Okay, and when I compute that cross product, I get negative 1 over root 2 ax plus 1 over root 2 ay. Okay, so our magnetic field intensity due to segment 2 is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of 27 times negative ax plus ay like that. Okay, and I'll put some asterisks there because we'll come back to that in, in a little bit. Now for segment 3, segment 3 is a little bit more challenging. Okay, I'm going to try to squeeze this in here. Uh, let's, let's squeeze it right in here. Segment 3. Segment 3 does not lie on axis and it does not go through the origin, so we need to be a little bit careful. And we're going to take the perspective right here. Okay, with kind of with uh, segment three to our backs. So what that would look like is something like this. We've got z-axis again perpendicular to that plane, and here's segment two. And segment three is is going into the page. So that's segment three right there. And this is so this is the x prime axis again. Okay, but we're we're, we're concentrating now on on uh, segment 3. So first thing what we can do is point out that here's our field point at 5, right? And so this is the perpendicular distance. Okay? And you, you might ask yourself, well, I don't see any perpendicular going on. You know, I don't see any uh, orthogonal angle there. But remember, we're concentrating on segment 3, which is into the page. So into the page and this line that I've just drawn here, those are orthogonal to one another. And that distance is rho and that is the square root of 27. So where did I get 27 from? Remember this is square root of 2, right? And then this is 5, and so that distance is the square root of 27. So um, again here a is equal to 0, and b is equal to square root of 2, and a unit vector in the direction of the segment. So this, here's the segment now. Right in the original figure, we're going this way. So a unit vector in that direction, that's a l. Well, we we go up by one and we go over to the left by one. So our unit vector is actually negative one over root two. The negative is because we go over to the left, a x, and then plus because we go up one over root two a y. Okay. So we've got that guy, and here is here's the a row direction. All right, so we need to figure out what a row is. Okay, well for a row, notice that. Okay, actually look at the original figure. So we're at this point here. Okay, and to get back to our field point, to, to get our field point, we need to go down in the y direction and left, in i.e. negative in the x direction, and then we need to go positive 5 units up or out toward us. So our a row can be written as negative ax because we we, uh, we we go left one unit, negative ay because we go down one unit, and then plus 5az because we go out of the page towards us. And then we just normalize that by the length or by the um, yeah by the length of the vector, which is uh, 5 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, square root of 27. Okay, so that is our a row. And again, we can find a phi, which is what we're interested in, so we can apply this equation up here. 
and that is again the cross product of AL with a row. So I'm not going to show the details here, but here's AL, right? And here's a row. So when I do that, when I compute that cross product, I get that a phi is equal to, it looks like 5 over 3 root 6 ax plus 5 over 3 root 6 ay plus 2 over 3 root 6 az. So you can work that out on your own there. That And then we can apply this equation and we see that H3, again segment 3 is carrying 10 amps, divided by 4 pi times the square root of 27, right, rho is 27, or what rho is the square root of 27, times root 2, b is root 2, okay, over the square root of 29, which is rho squared plus b squared, right, times a phi, and we just got a phi there. Okay, this is a phi. All right, so finally, finally, we take, I'll put an asterisk here, right? So we take this guy, which has just a, got a y component, this guy, which just has uh, an x and a y component, and then add it to h3, which has all three components. And when you put all of that together, you get h, the final magnetic field intensity, and that is negative 3.23 ax minus 1.08 ay plus 10.9 az and I've actually got that in milliamps per meter milliamps per meter